Gentlemen, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the Brent 031 YouTube channel. So I'm gonna show you guys something today, something that's very rare, and it's probably something you didn't even know existed, okay? But first, let's back up to the Vietnam War and uh, let's talk about fragmentation vests. So without a doubt, the most widely used vest by Marines during the Vietnam War was the M1955 variant. And essentially this consisted of a series of ballistic nylon as well as uh, several rows of overlapping plates called Doron plates. And this vest would give you basic protection against fragmentation. The tag on the inside says that 70% of combat casualties were created by fragmentation. So fragmentation from exploding artillery, mortars, grenades, things of that nature, okay? Um, so that's what these vests were primarily designed to protect against. And they may even offer some ballistic protection against smaller cal calibers like pistol rounds, okay? So that was the predominant vest used by United States Marines in theater in Vietnam during the entirety of the Vietnam War. Um, the Army uses a somewhat different vest, okay? And their vest, very similar to the Marine vest, provided essentially just, you know, protection against uh, fragmentation. But they wanted more. They wanted to look into offering their individual infantrymen protection against small arms. Because, let's face it, in infantry combat, you know, like, you know infantrymen versus infantrymen, they're exchanging rifle fire in addition to grenades and you know RPGs and things of that nature. So obviously there's a level of fragmentation involved as well as small uh, caliber ammunition and uh, small arms usage, right? So they wanted to give their guys a little bit of increased protection and air crews during the time during the Vietnam War had a vest that was capable of holding these plates, these ceramic made plates that were able to stop rifle cartridge uh, caliber ammunition. And uh, they wanted to try to incorporate that into the individual infantryman's body armor. And they came out with this. Again, the U.S. Army came out with this variable body armor system. And essentially, guys, it looks just like what you would see on the modern day battlefield. It's a, uh, a, a fragmentation vest, right? So it has soft armor that's capable of giving protection against uh, a fragmentation and smaller caliber ammunition. And then it also has on the front as well as in the back a pocket that carries a ceramic plate that's capable of stopping um, rifle caliber cartridges. Specifically, your 762 by 39 which was used by you know, rifles like the AK-47 and SKS that were heavily used during the Vietnam War. And this vest also has many modern features that you see, right? It has uh, two panels here on the sides that overlap in the front, and that's how it secures. It also has a quick release system here so that you know, an individual infantryman could get out of his body armor very quickly. So very uh, modern day looking vest, okay? But ultimately the troops in Vietnam, when they sent these out to units for testing and evaluation in the field, in combat, they found, hey, the thing is too bulky, it's too heavy, and uh, we don't like it. Even though it offers more protection, it was just too much. And uh, we even saw that kind of situation in the GWAT, where you know troops that went into Iraq and Afghanistan you know, there was bitches and, and gripes about, hey, the, the current armor systems do not provide enough protection to the individual infantrymen. And what do they do? They essentially overcorrect and design these flak systems that were too bulky and, uh, you know, just the grunts hated them. And now we go backwards, right? We offer less protection in terms of, you know, protecting and covering your upper torso. However, they're smaller systems. They do provide uh, ballistic protection. They do provide uh, protection against uh, sappy, or excuse me, small arms fire. However, they've cut them down to tailor them to the individual infantrymen, cut down on the weight, made them slimmer, and uh, just more acceptable for infantry use. And that was kind of the problem with that vest. It just was too big. And uh, so the Marine Corps tried to do the exact same thing, all right? They, you know, you had the Army with the variable body armor system. The Marine Corps tried to design a flak vest that was uh, capable of not only offering uh, protection against fragmentation, but also pr offer protection against small arms. And you guys can see there's a cut here. This is the Marine Corps experimental system here. And uh, I do not know the proper name that they gave to this because, again, it was an experimental vest. Uh, but essentially it was just like the U.S. Army's variable body armor. And uh, it had a pocket in the front that was capable of accepting a ceramic plate, right? If you flip around on the back side, you see another pocket on the back, but this was actually an integrated small backpack, okay? This was not designed to carry another ceramic plate. So the Marine Corps 
was opting to go the route of, hey, uh, two plates is probably too much and not necessary. I'd rather just go with one plate to cut down on weight and we're gonna put this in the front, all right? Offer that protection to the upper torso from uh, rifle caliber cartridges in the front of the, uh, the vest itself. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, guys. We're gonna talk about this system right here and uh, again, this is a, an experimental vest designed during the Vietnam War. And some of you may be looking at this and saying, hey, you know, in Vietnam, I thought, you know, guys wore OD green. Well, you're not correct there, okay? In the United States Marine Corps, starting in around, uh, I believe, late 1968, the Marine infantry started to incorporate ERDL uniforms, just like the one I'm wearing right now. And uh, that's what this flak vest is. This is not woodland camouflage. This is the predecessor to woodland camouflage. This is ERDL. ERDL uh, green dominant camouflage. And that was what was adopted by Marines um, in the Vietnam War, specifically for their infantrymen. All right, so that's what this vest was made out of. So it never saw combat in Vietnam, to my knowledge. Uh, there, I've not seen a single picture of this vest in theater. The only picture I've seen of this vest is uh, a post on the US military forum. If you guys haven't seen that, it's a great reference for you know inquiring about gear from over the years, specifically uh, experimental stuff. And uh, in that post, one of the uh, users shows a picture from Leatherneck Magazine from 1971 of a Marine wearing this body armor. And that is essentially the only uh, photo I've ever seen of this gear being used. And obviously it's an experimental uh, photo and a test prototype type photo. It's not used in the theater. It's not used uh, in Vietnam, but obviously this vest was designed for use in Vietnam and that's what they were looking at, okay? So obviously this thing never got adopted. There's uh, a lot of similarities I see in terms of uh, construction uh, between the M1955 and what would ultimately replace it later on were excuse me replaced the m1955 and that is the uh personal armor system ground troop the pasget vest okay you guys you know this is made popular in you know conflicts like panama and desert storm and um yeah this would serve all the way from the 80s into the early g watt and you know in terms of ballistic protection this looks very similar to what this is uh, made out of uh minus your you know ceramic small arms protective plate so without further ado let's go ahead and uh get an up close look at this guy so you guys can check this out all right so here's an up close look at the vest you guys can clearly see the cutout here for what is a ceramic plate and this is the same type of plate that's used in the uh, u.s army variable body armor Pretty tight fit. There we go. All right, so you guys can see how that's cut. It's essentially cut and contoured for, you know, your uh, individual warfighter's upper torso. So, let's see, uh, it says this armor may save your life. It will protect vital areas against 30 caliber ball small arms and shell grenade fragments. So th again, this is the exact same plate that's worn in the variable body armor, if you guys have seen that video I put out. But that just slides right in there. You guys can see it's got a series of Velcro here. Just secures like that. So this has a small pocket in the front. Oh, look at that. Use and carry your body armor. Fragment aren't small arms protective for ground troops. So it looks like you have some sort of instruction manual in here. Fragmentation small arms protective vest was designed to protect you against small arms, fire AK-47 projectiles and grenade and shell fragments. <laughs> but only if you wear it and use it properly. Let's skip the page there. So what's interesting about this vest is it comes in different sizes. Um, and the M1955s, I think, no, M1955s did have sizes as well. Uh, but this one has almost like a uniform 
top it has a you know a size for your torso and then a length so like a guy like me would wear a, a large long So this is uh, really interesting, guys. I did not know that this was in here. <laughs> so I'm just showing it to you guys, and then you guys can see that uh, it has a little logbook here. So you can put your information. And this actually says U.S. Army Natick Laboratories. So I wonder if this is the same vest um, that was used. Let's see, this paper says... I have no idea about that. So, in any event, guys, I had no idea this was in here. So that was a surprising find. But this fit right inside this little pocket. And you guys can see Velcro closure. So obviously it was designed for, you know, smaller items and, uh, you know, the little booklet that I just pulled out that, you know, had stuff on there that, you know, you could annotate, you know, who it belonged to and uh, if there was any defective things associated with the vest. So on here, we have uh, tabs that absolutely will facilitate the carrying of, you know, gear that had the same keepers that run M1956 uh, style equipment and the uh, later systems. All right, so those could be attached to the web gear in that manner, you guys can see. So it's almost eliminating the need for an exterior, uh, you know, utility belt. Uh, or web gear, like you saw with the M1955, you saw a lot of Marines just attaching gear to the bottom of the flag. It looks like they're trying to do the same thing with this vest. It also has the uh, eyelets here at the bottom for you know systems like this, like the M1910 hanger style equipment. So that could be attached right there. And there's canteen pouches with M1910 equipment. Um, uh, mostly your older stuff, but obviously our bayonets at the time still had M1910 style hangers. So the front also, you guys can see it's, it secures with Velcro. And we'll, we'll talk about that once I get to the back, but you have a Velcro closure in the front. And then up here at the shoulder area, area you have a, a canvas material as well as that shooter cord, just like on the uh, M1955 style vest. So the shooter cord can assist with two different things. You know, placing a rifle butt stock in there helps keep it in that little pocket, as well as you're on a, uh, like a force march or something, and the actual sling of the rifle, you know, is coming over, coming over the vest and can sit in there, and that helps keep it from sliding off. Let's go up here to the top, and you guys can see it's got quick release. All right, so two buttons, and then a, a Velcro. So, you can easily get out of your flak that way, and that's on both sides. But it's pretty interesting to note that, you know, a lot of modern body armor is, uh, is put on by coming over the top, you know, putting it over the top of your head, and then uh, securing on the sides. And look, here we got something that was designed during the Vietnam War, and that's the same manner of which they're looking at uh, uh, going with in terms of, you know, their next generation of uh, flak vest. So let's flip it over to the side, or excuse me, on the back. And you guys can see that you have that webbing all the way on the back side, and you got the, the heavy stitching to incorporate, again, your, you know, we typically refer to these nowadays as Alice style clips, but, you know, obviously these predate Alice. Okay, so the same type of keepers that were used on, you know, your M56 style equipment, um, and subsequently like uh, your Alice type equipment later on, uh, this is what these are designed for, is these type of keepers being able to attach there. So, so your side panels, you guys can see it's got, uh, this side has 550 cord, this side has nylon cord. I don't know if both sides were supposed to be nylon or this is the way it's actually supposed to be, but nonetheless, I've got examples of both here on this vest. So a nylon over here and then 550 cord on this side. And then you guys can see the eyelets there, it's just inter interwoven. And this is how you attach the, uh, the vest. If you need more length, then obviously you just uh, undo these and then uh, it will allow you to stretch these out to accommodate, you know, a, a wider user. So on the back here is a 
small pouch and this is a again this is a backpack this is not a, supposed to be for a uh, ceramic plate you guys can see how it is just a small haversack style pouch and then it even has three drain holes at the bottom so that it can help drain out water if this thing were to fill up from going into the water and you guys can see the shooter's cord goes all the way down in the back. Just again, it's for helping. Uh, one of the purpose of it is for helping with uh, you know carrying your rifle and that sling staying on there. So let's go to the inside. So on the back panel, you guys can see here's the tag. A little area behind here, but I don't feel any uh, instruction booklets in there. And it just says, read your instruction booklet. This armor may save your life. And then it has uh, you know, some other instructions on there, similar to what was inside the instruction booklet. And then it says, wear your protective armor at all times in combat. You guys can also see it's got some eyelets here at the bottom to help facilitate the dr draining of uh, water. Again, sometimes as grunts, specifically Marines, we get wet. So here's the uh, other side front side again drain holes and that's pretty much it guys pretty self-explanatory pretty simple and it's just interesting to see how they design this and ultimately this was not adopted obviously it was probably considered too hot and heavy same reasons as the uh, army variable body armor um, but it was ultimately replaced, or this was not implemented, but this was, and if you look at, you know, the M1955 compared to this, this looks more similar to an M1955, um, but even more similar to, you know, what the Army was using at the time with their, uh, th you know, three-fourths collar vest. And I will say that I feel like the... vest itself, the ballistic pa panels inside are very similar to what is used on the uh, Pazgit vest. But nonetheless, guys, unbelievable to think that during the Vietnam War, you know, we were looking at body armor like this, which is very reminiscent in my eyes to what we're using nowadays. Well, that's it, gentlemen. That completes this video over this experimental Vietnam-era Marine Corps variable body armor. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, don't forget to check out my channel, like, and subscribe. I've already done several gear, uniforms, and equipment videos in the past, and I plan to do several more in the future. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment.